I want to talk about something this morning that maybe we don't talk enough about, and that is heaven. Now, maybe, maybe we shy away from talking about heaven too much because we don't want people to, uh, although that is a major emphasis in our life, we don't want people to think that that's all we are concerned about, that, uh, that, that the Bible only paints good pictures about the future of mankind regardless of his life. I don't really know, but I think sometimes we don't talk enough about heaven. I mean, if indeed that is what we are working towards, and should we be faithful and the Lord finds us to be faithful servants, that that's where we will spend all of our eternity. Don't you want to know more about heaven? I, I titled the lesson this morning, So You Want to Go to Heaven? I think if I, if I were to take a poll of the room this morning and ask who would like to go to heaven, I believe every, room, every hand in the room would go up. I really believe that. I think we're all here this morning. We're working towards the same goal. We want to go to heaven. And I want you to know that God wants you to go to heaven. As a matter of fact, He did everything in His power to see that that would be a reality. He's done everything humanly possible to make sure that you and I make it to that place that we call heaven. Now, He's left it up to you and to me. He's made us as human beings who have free choice. We can either do what He requires and inherit that eternal abode of God, or we can deny what He says and disobey Him and reap the recomp just recompense of reward for that as well. What do you think of, though, when you hear the word heaven? Uh, you don't have to answer out loud, but, but I'm sure you are just like me. There are images that pour through your mind based on the Bible's description of that place when you hear the word heaven. I think about the angels in heaven. I think about the throne of God. I think about some of the pictures that we, we, we read in the book of Revelation regarding heaven. Think about a street of gold. But most of all, I think about being in the very presence of faithful saints who have lived since the beginning of, e of time for all eternity. I think about being there with my late grandmother and my late grandfather on opposite sides of the family. Never met my grandfather. But he obeyed the gospel before he passed. My grandmother was a saintly lady responsible of, or for bringing some 60 souls to know Christ in her life. And I'm longing for the day that I can rejoin her and at the same time be in the presence of God the Father. We read of a place that's called heaven. It's made for the pure and the free. These truths in God's Word He has given. How beautiful heaven must be. In heaven, no drooping nor pining, no wishing for elsewhere to be. God's light is forever there shining. How beautiful heaven must be. Pure waters of life there are flowing, and all who will drink may be free. Rare jewels of splendor are glowing. How beautiful heaven must be. How beautiful heaven must be. Sweet home of the happy and free. Fair haven of rest for the weary. How beautiful heaven must be. Folks, heaven is a prepared place for a prepared people. And I want you to understand today, and I know there are some preachers who would disagree with me, but I'm a firm believer that Revelation 21 and 22 are references to heaven. I don't see it humanly possible that God would close such a great book without talking so much about that wonderful place called heaven. And so from a few select scriptures in Revelation 21 and 22 this morning, I want to show you some things that the Bible says that you must be or that you must do in order to go to that place called heaven. I asked you that question earlier, so you want to go to heaven? And if you answer that question yes this morning, there are four things, according to the book of Revelation, at least concerning our study this morning, that you must do 
or you must be. I want you to know, first of all, this morning, that heaven is a place for those who overcome. Look at Revelation 21 and verse number 7. You back up to verse number 6, we have that famous verse that nearly all people everywhere would likely know. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. But notice verse 7. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. See, folks, heaven is a place for those who overcome. Now, you might be asking yourself the question, well, what is John talking about? What is Jesus talking about here? What is it that we must overcome if we wish to go to the place called heaven? Well, first of all, you might find it interesting that in the book of Revelation, the theme is just that, overcome. It, it seems to be as if Jesus, through John, is telling the first century Christians, if you overcome you can come over. That is, if, if you remain faithful, if you overcome the things of this life, you can be where I am for all eternity. And as a matter of fact, to each of the seven churches in Asia Minor, Revelation chapters 2 and 3, to each of those churches, Jesus says something like this, To him who overcomes, I will give and fill in the blank. Seven times in Revelation 2 and 3, that is the emphasis in those letters that John, Jesus wrote to the churches, that John delivered to those churches. To him who overcomes, I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely. To him who overcomes, I will give access to the tree of life. See, folks, we must overcome. Now, you need to understand something about the book of Revelation. The book of Revelation was written in a time in which the church was facing severe persecution. And as these saints in the first century are facing this severe persecution at the hand of the Roman emperors and the Roman government system, the message of the book of Revelation is that you must remain faithful if you want to go to heaven. Jesus didn't make any bones about it. John didn't hide the fact or sugarcoat it that if you want to go to heaven, you've got to be faithful to God. And folks, what I know about the Romans, I would venture to say that what these first century Christians endured is far worse than anything our life would ever throw at us. Because the Romans, you know what they did with Christians? They killed them. You know what they did to the Christians? If they didn't kill them, they made life so miserable for Christians that those Christians sometimes may have wished that they were dead to the point that even they couldn't buy and sell in the marketplace. It was such severe persecution that we probably have never nor will ever see. So folks, to remain faithful, we must overcome the trials and the temptations in life. And at that time... That meant that these Christians might even have to die for their faith. Yes, the Bible records for us people, uh, for instance, in Revelation chapter 4, I think it is, as you consider that throne room of God that, that Jesus pictures there. And the Bible mentions that there were some people there who were martyred for the cause of Christ, and yet they had washed their robes white in the blood of the, blood of the Lamb. 